pa 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 pa. When they are at home, Melissa and Paul Kingma are mom and dad to baby L and her two big brothers. Second baby was、uh, epidural. At work, it's Dr. Paul Kingma, neonatal director of the Cincinnati Fetal Center at Cincinnati Children's. Kingma is part of a comprehensive team specializing in treating complex and rare fetal conditions. <laughs> Melissa, a nurse practitioner, also works at Cincinnati Children's, taking care of the sickest babies in the neonatal intensive care unit. Every once in a while, we'll sit down for dinner and and we'll talk about what we do, and we'll say it's a unique privilege to do what we do. It's like how many people in the world get to save babies' lives that nobody else could save. In 2017, Paul and Melissa found themselves in a role reversal when she was 20 weeks pregnant. An ultrasound revealed a problem with baby L. They saw the profile, and I said, "Well, that's a really small chin." And the ultrasound tech said, "Yeah, yeah, it is." And she got quiet, and you know, took a lot more pictures. And then we had to meet with our OB. Their doctor referred them to a place they both know well, the Cincinnati Fetal Center. Tests revealed their baby girl had a life-threatening genetic condition called micronathia, which means her small jaw will cause her tongue to crowd at the back of the throat, making it difficult to breathe. To go over a delivery plan, the comprehensive team at the fetal center met with Dr. Kima and his wife as a patient family. It's surprising, even though. We've been through that process. You know, your brain shuts off a little bit,、mm-hmm. and we had lots of kind of, lots of questions that,、um, on normal days, I feel like I could have answered myself. But when it was your own baby, you know, it was nice to have people there to say, you know, are you worried about this or are you worried about that? Together, the team came up with a plan to deliver Elle at Cincinnati Children's on October 17, 2017. Doctors performed a procedure with placenta support, allowing Melissa to avoid going under deep anesthesia. This also allowed her to hear what was happening around her, including her baby's first cry. It was just this overwhelming sense of relief that. Despite what was coming, I knew it was still going to be difficult.、Um, that she was going to be okay. It, it was amazing. The next challenge was creating an airway. With the umbilical cord still attached, ENT surgeon Dr. Mike Rutter was able to successfully insert a breathing tube through Elle's nose and avoid a more risky procedure of a tracheotomy, which would have placed a small hole in her neck. Well, the biggest fear would be, you know, what if they they couldn't get an airway in at all? Yeah, because that's、you、not know? guaranteed. It's, it's not guaranteed, and and we would have lost her. And I'm I was thankful that I got to stay awake for the procedure, so I knew what was going on. Because my biggest fear through the whole thing was that I was going to wake up and she wasn't going to be there. The next few months would be a roller coaster of health scares, tests, and surgeries. L has more trips to the hospital in the future to help her with eating. Her parents say their journey has changed them at home and at work. My daughter was in the NICU for several months, and I know what that means, and and I know that it, it tires you out after a while, and that's that's perfectly understandable, and, and be able to to relate a lot better. I think from a mom standpoint, I I understand the, the stresses of what it is to have. A baby in the NICU. When things don't go like they're supposed to go, I think moms automatically blame themselves. That just deeper understanding, I think, has made me a lot more empathetic, and I approach the way that I talk to families differently now. It's definitely changed my perspective and and how I'm able to relate to the families that we work with. Just the smallest little things, you know, can really make a big impact.